In a haunted town at some point during the Edo period, a messenger arrives one morning with a note for Goemon-san. It appears Ebisumaru has been kidnapped, and if Goemon doesn't go after him, he'll die. Yikes. As Goemon, the mystical ninja, you travel from town to town trying to find clues and doing a bunch of fetch quests for NPCs. Early on, your route is straightforward, heading left until you find a gate that you can pass through to move to the next stage. However, by level 3, there will be split routes to adventure around. It's a shame this wasn't done from the get-go, as the first couple of levels are pretty dull. There are endless streams of brain-dead enemies who don't really target you, they just follow their predetermined paths. Don't stand still, because they don't stop coming. You can earn cash each time you kill one, which can be exchanged in shops for food items to replenish health, armour to protect you for a hit, weapon upgrades, that sort of thing. Typically though, most of your upgrades will be found in pots or bags in the levels. You can find a candle that makes you move way faster, something that gives you a projectile shot instead of your normal cane, and a few other improvements. Note that if you get hit, you'll lose these, so make sure you have a suit of armour equipped as often as you can, which can absorb one strike. There are lots of shops, and money is literally never an issue, based on how many enemies there are. As stated, the first couple of levels are frighteningly tedious, with no variation in enemies save for the sprites – they all act identically – and no boss fights to speak of. Stage 3 becomes a bit more interesting with some actual storyline development, branching paths, and some mildly interesting bosses. There are even a couple of mini-games such as Archery that add a little longevity, but not much. Coat of Paint aside, this game pretty much plays out the same way from start to finish. Hit detection is generous and enemy movements idiotic, meaning there's never really any excuse to take damage save for letting yourself become overwhelmed by multiple bad guys. You sort of hastily inch your way along, if that makes any sense, killing what you find and make it to the end of each stage. The game looks nice and has a fantastically composed soundtrack, but then it is a Konami game after all. I wouldn't go out of my way to find this one though. If you're hearing ringing bells with the name Goemon and Mystical Ninja, you'll perhaps be aware of a game that came out very late in the Game Boy's lifespan. Mystical Ninja starring Goemon hit the shelves in the West in 1998. A lot of the same characters are involved in that one, but this is a totally different game. Similar vibe, but thankfully by 1998 they'd figured out how to make the franchise into a much more palatable experience. This time round, not so much. Thanks so much for watching this video. The Kickstarter for the book is now live. Check the link in the description for how you can back the project and be the first to get your hands on the Portable Power Encyclopedia, featuring more than 900 Game Boy game reviews and a whole wealth of useful information on the world's favourite handheld console. See you later on!